Hi everyone. Welcome. We're back in the sewing hub in the basement. Yes, you've reached us live, Bernita Canada, from the sewing hub in York Region. Welcome. Hope everybody's having a great day. Just waiting for a few of you to join in. I hope you notice we have some new sound equipment. Yeah. Barb was complaining that she couldn't hear, so Barb, we got you a microphone, so hopefully you can hear real, us real well this time. Great. I'm on green. Yeah, yeah, good to go. We're good to go. So hi, everybody. I'm just going to check um, that I'm coming up live here. Such an interesting day here in Ontario. It's mild and windy and overcast. A great day to stay inside and sew with you, that's for sure. We've had some new things happening at Bernina Canada. We did some uh, live classes over the internet for our long arm people. And that went really well. Thanks everybody who joined in and helped us with our inaugural online class. Uh, got some great feedback, I really appreciate it. And looking forward to bringing you more um, virtual events uh, soon. We're working on that calendar. So let me see if I can see the comments. Um, let us know you're here. Sarah's in the house, so I know the video is going to be perfect this time. So everybody say hi to me. Hi to Sarah. Where are you coming from? You can probably even hear me if I'm not turned to the camera. Judy, you're here. We can start. And Kathy and Linda and Jane, you're all my favorites. They're all here. And Paul, hey, from Ottawa, Paul. I wonder what Paul's cooking this week. He cooks some great bread and stuff like that. He's pretty amazing. So welcome everyone. Today we are talking about um, frilly stuff. We're talking about gathers and ruffles and pleating and ruching and all kinds of fun texture we can add to our projects. So I know some of you have been taking advantage of our buy two, get one free Bernina feed sale. And I've seen a bunch of roughly type feet going through the warehouse. So I thought maybe you'd like to know um, some tips and tricks on how to use them. If you have a big book of feet, you'll already know, but um, I'll give you some user tips. And otherwise, I'm working on the Pinterest page. It'll be up tonight, tomorrow morning at the latest. Um, that will include an ebook on gathering and um, some projects, some ideas, some inspiration for what you can do with gathers and and ruffles and if you have some great ideas shoot them in the comments so the other people can see what your ideas are for ruffles and gathers um i can show you one while we're waiting for everybody to join can you see that one sarah so this is a nice little rug it's just on canvas and we made a bunch of gathers you can still hear me because the microphone is right by my mouth this is amazing sarah um, just used a jelly roll and made some simple gathers and then it's sewn to the base of this um, light canvas rug or heavy muslin actually is really what it is and it makes a cute little fuzzy fuzzy rug but I could also see this on a jean skirt on a pillow where else would you put this um, I've seen some bags with ruffles right now that's been really popular um, where else can you use a ruffle just about anywhere right bed linen kitchen towels looks cute all kinds of great places so we'll show you how to get really nice even gathers like that and um, yeah I'll get started let's see what's going on hey Janice she's way from way up north so I guess we'll go to the machine and I'll show you the feet that we use for gathering all right so I've got a couple feet here there's two type of feet we use for gathering the number 16 foot and the number 86, the ruffler. And this one looks to me like a medieval torture device and it, it looks really scary, but it's actually uh, fun to use. I'll show you that one. But if you want to make simple gathers, you could use just the 16. And it comes in two formats, um, a narrow format, there we go, and a wide format. And the machine I have today has nine millimeter um, feed dogs. So I would use the wide format foot because it would cover the feed dogs. 
But if you had a narrow machine like a 440 or a 215 or something like that, then you need the narrow one. That's as easy as it is, wider narrow number 16. So I'm going to put the narrow one away and we'll attach number 16 from the side where I can't see. I know. There we go. It's harder to do from the side than I thought. All right, so number 16 is attached and you can just make simple ruffles. All you need is the straight stitch and this one, the way it, the ruffles are controlled is just by how big the stitch is, how big a bite the stitch is, and how much fabric is moved under those feed dogs. And that's just how big the gather is going to be. Cool. All right, watch how this goes. I'm going to set the stitch length to four. All right. And you can see it gathering at the back. What if I go even more? Just gonna work with this. See how the gathers are really piling up now? Yeah, that's a really full gather right there. I'm going to bring this around so you can see what it looks like. Hopefully Sarah can see that. I'm frozen here, so I can't see what it looks like. But yeah, so this is where I kind of started out and it wasn't quite as gathered. And then I added some more. I made the stitch length longer and that created more full um, gathers. It's just that easy. Now, the traditional way to make these gathers, you guys know this if you took home ec. <laughs> Um, or basic sewing, you would um, sew two lines of sewing and then pull on the bobbin thread and gather it up and try to make it uh, look really nice and even. But doing it, this method makes the gather naturally nice and even. And this way, it, it's just a lot easier. So you could now take this ruffle and sew it to a pillow or sew it to your project, just like we did with the rug. So that's what we did here. These um, ruffles were created independently, just like this, using a jelly roll that already had pinked edges. And then it was sewn a second time, just sewn down the center, right on the stitching line again but sewn to the base. And that's how this cute little rag rug was made. It's so simple to use, use up a lot of scraps, um, and it could certainly be washed and dried. So that's how you would make a simple, simple ruffle. You could also use this to um, gather a skirt. So if I look under here in this skirt, this is pretty much how this gather was created. It's just a gentle gather and that gather was created and sewn to the skirt at the, at the bodice at the same time. So let me show you how to do that. So when I made the first ruffle, we put the fabric underneath the foot. We put it directly underneath the foot and that's what I'm gonna do here because that's what I'm gonna gather with. So this is my piece I'm gonna gather now. I'm gonna put the foot down, it'll hold everything in place. And let's just pretend I was going to attach it to an apron or something like that. And um, this is going to be my apron piece. On the side of the foot, can you see that, Sarah? There's an opening there. Right? And I'm going to slide my fabric in the opening on the foot on the machine. That's what I'm going to do. So here I'm going to slide it in. Great, easy, right? And off we go to the ruffles. Now that bottom piece wants to travel really fast because it's being gathered up. And the top piece is just going straight. So I kind of manage them separately by keeping them um, some air in between.
Looking good. Is there other questions coming up? Not really? No. Okay, everybody knows how to ruffle. That's good. All right, I just about ran out of fabric. So I'm going to show you the great big reveal here. So it doesn't look too impressive, but when you open it up, see what's happened? The uh, top fabric was not being gathered up by the feed dogs, but the bottom was. And you created this beautiful ruffle and you attached it to the flat fabric at the same time. Isn't that amazing? I love that. So this would be a great way to attach um, a border ruffle to an apron, to a dress, to a skirt. You could make a bed skirt this way. And all you would do is to test out how much fabric you need, would maybe take a 10 inch piece of fabric, similar fabric, run it through here to gather it and then measure it. So now if it was six inches instead of 10 inches after you've gathered it, you know how much fabric you're gonna need now for that 100 inch border, I'm gonna need an extra 40% or 60%. My brain is gone right now, so that's it. But another way you could finish this is you could use your number 10 foot and you could um, press that seam allowance to the flat side. I'm gonna put the number 10 on again. Of course I can't see. Okay, so number 10 is on with that really nice flange in the middle. So if I run that along the seam, I would press this, of course, in the real world. And I'm going to move the, don't worry about that, it's there. I'm just going to make my stitch length a bit smaller, because that's a ridiculous amount of six. I don't like that. I'm just holding the ruffles flat. You could press this, of course, that would be great. Okay, let's see how that looks. Oh, I'll look for questions too. What do you think of that? Oh my gosh, I love that. All right. So Lorraine says, how do you determine what stitch length to use if you're gathering to another piece? So I kind of explained that. Um, do that, you would do the math, right? So you would um, find out that you had that 10 inch piece, it was gathering up five per to five inches, so you need twice as much fabric for um, the apron that you're making, the hem, right? So if the hem is 60 inches long on that setting, you would know to cut a piece for gathering of about 90, right? 60 plus 50 of, of 60 is 90. And then you could easily finish this. I'm gonna trim it off. So if this was an apron, let's say, I'm cutting this the wrong way, guys, because I'm sitting at the machine all funky and weird because my director, Sarah, is mean to me. She's not. She's great. So now you could just finish this by folding it twice, right? And again, stitching with number 10. Heck, we have number 10 right here. Let's do it. Okay. Let's see if I can do it on the fly here. I think it's like this. I just gotta check my ruffle. Okay. There we go. So you could finish it off like that. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. It looks great on like little kids clothes, aprons, all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, Dia, check that foot out, it's amazing. Um, yep, so Marilyn, you get the idea now of how to, to measure? So if you knew your bodice was um, 20 inches and you knew you did your test strip with the exact same fabric um, and you knew that it gathered up down to five inches, you need it twice as long, that kind of thing, right? Makes sense. Janice says it makes sense. Good, 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 good. Okay, Ellen, I'm glad you're having a coffee break. That's great. I Oh, how do you decide? Carrie says, how do you decide on what stitch um, length? You just test it, Carrie. So um, I did it, let's just look at the ruffler one more, sorry, the gathering foot one more time. Number 16, I'm using the wide one. 
sorry if my hand's in front. And um, this is gathering at, you use a pretty big length, to be honest, Carrie. I'm going to use four and a half. That's four and a half, and then that's six. I'm going to show you six. So you just, you just test, uh, Carrie, and you just decide the look that you like. Sometimes it's better if it's a really sort of gentle gather like this one. Hopefully Sarah can see that. I'm frozen again, Sarah, sorry. Um, a gentle gather like that, or it's more, more piled up, right? If you have the, the larger the stitch, the more it's going to gather because it, the feed dogs are grabbing more and more fabric underneath and passing it underneath the foot. And it's kind of like that airplane wing thing where there's like lots more fabric going under the wing and grabbing it all under the foot. And then we're bypassing that when we put the plain fabric in. Isn't it the coolest? I just love that trick. It's amazing. That's great. And Colette, we're using number 16 right now to gather. So I'm gonna show you one more time. If you wanted to gather um, something to a flat piece, you would just put the the piece you want to gather along the feed dogs and the piece you don't want to gather would go on top and then you can choose your seam allowance I'm just using the edge of the foot because it's convenient for me and I'm gathering at um, six right now is my stitch length five is about my favorite length I'm gonna do six mind the two pieces of fabric separately because this one is traveling at quite a big speed I'm gonna show you how fast it's going See how my hand is going a lot faster? So you have to just manage the two pieces separately. And take your time. Don't do it like me. Take your time. Can you see the diff See how great it is now? Like, it's gorgeous. I love it. Yeah. Hey, Deanna, how you doing? I'm glad you're here. Deanna and I used to work together, and she is a great person. Um, yeah, so that's how it gathers all together, and then you could finish it. Of course, you could also take this to the serger and serge the edges together, or you could uh, finish them before you gathered them. Hopefully that'll help you. So that's the gathering foot number 16. It comes in the wide format for 9 millimeter machines, and it comes in the narrow format for the 5.5 millimeter machines. And our burnettes, you can get a gathering foot for them as well, for sure. Now, you can get this on for the older machines as well. For the vintage machines, I'm sure we can fit one for your machine too. And it's a fun little um, gadget to have, easy to use. Great. Nope, Kathy says, can you reverse that? Can you gather on the top and relax the bob bottom? You can't because, uh, good question, Kathy, because this is where all the action is happening. It's happening on the feed dogs so this is where it's gathering the fabric on the bottom so there's no way to change that but the funny thing that you asked that Kathy because I'm sure that we're connected in the brain you and I is if you use the ruffler attachment it's actually the opposite so let me show you the ruffler attachment that's another option that you have so here it is by 16 check out the ruffler attachment isn't she scary looking yep she's got an arm just like the walking foot that has to go over the needle bar and this is where all the um, ruffling action is happening yeah so i'm going to put it on the machine and i'll be careful to put the lobster claw over the needle bar so you can see as the needle goes up and down i'm going to try this nope from the back sir uh, we'll see it you'll see it as the needle goes up and down this goes up and down and here on the front of this doodad, you've got some numbers. It says zero, it says 12, and then it says six, and then it says one. And I'm able to move this around. And this is basically the ruffling program. So I'm gonna put it on six to show you how it works in general. Mm. Yep, all right. So this one is a little different. Um, like Kathy said, Kathy, this is the one that actually kind of gathers on the top. Watch this one. Um, it just goes between 
there's a little black, I think Sarah can pick it up, there's kind of a blacky blue uh, flange here and it just goes under that and it does not go on the feed dogs. It's not, it's touching here first before the feed dogs. And then we can lower the foot and we're ready to ruffle. And what's gonna happen is every sixth stitch, this is gonna kick in a little pleat of fabric. Trust me, that's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna sew slow so you can see it. And I'm gonna go down to a stitch length of three and a half. I'm gonna experiment with that. All right, here we go. Let's count the stitches. One, oops, I broke my needle. Well, how much fun is that to break a needle live on TV, uh, live on Facebook Live? Let's fix it. That's an easy fix. I had moved my needle over for top stitching and forgot to move it back. I just got to grab a needle. Hang on. You plan for every eventuality, but not that. Let's put in a new needle. Happens to everyone, guys. And I don't need to re-thread. And I found all the bits of my needle. Yeah. That's good. And I'm gonna re-thread. Simple. Easy. Yep, the tip of my needle is over here. So I have all the needle. I don't have to go searching for it. All right, back in business like it never happened. See, it happens to everybody. All right, let's try it again. Take two, everyone. I'm gonna put that fabric under the little black flange and we're ready to ruffle. Ha <laughs> ha, I managed to put it in the right spot this time. All right, we're gonna count those stitches. See the kick? Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two. One, two, three, four, six. There you go. Watch it go. So the depth of this pleat, I'll show you. Let me do a little bit more. I'll show you. All right. So the depth of this pleat, can you see that, sir? It's okay. Is, uh, can be altered by changing this screw. And I think I've pushed it all the way in. So that's the deepest pleat on this stitch length. But you can see it makes a very um, sort of graphic look because it's so uniform. So remember I told you there were some numbers on the front here. So that was six. Let's change the number to 12. I'm gonna change this and put it in the number 12 slot. And now the pleats are even farther apart. That's what happened there. Let's put it to the number one slot. There it is, number one. All right. Yeah, Hannah says she used to use these, these ruffles and gatherers on her vintage machines. These have been around forever, right, Hannah? Like, if it ain't broke, don't change it. So now it's going to kick in every stitch. Check it out. Let me show you what that looks like. Can you see that? See how gathered it is here? It's so pretty. It looks really great. I love that. And then this is where it was 12 and they're very far apart. So it was a very gentle gather. Maybe if you're making um, like a bed skirt and you just want a little bit of extra fabric, you don't want three times as much fabric in your bed skirt. That would look weird. And then for Kathy, let me show you Kathy how this is on the bottom this time. Let's grab some new fabric. So, I'm sorry, this is on the top. Remember, last time the gathering on the gathering foot was happening on the top. This time it's going to happen. It's flat on, nothing's happening on the feed dogs. I'll be okay. I have um, broken needle brain. You know how you get a little panicky when you break a needle? <laughs> I'm okay now. Shouldn't have had that coffee this morning. But thanks for the coffee, Lloyd. All right, so now on, this one's going to be ruffled. The, the lavender and the periwinkle on the bottom is just running along the feed dogs and nothing's going to happen to it. It's just going to be sewn in straight. Let's see what happens. 
See how it's really pulling the top in so quickly? Can you see the difference? I'll put them a little bit side by side so you can see. It's really scooping in that lavender, pretty lavender fabric. And there's actually also on here a zero spot. So I can go to zero. I can, the zero is not going to gather at all. So I can do a little straight section. And then I can gather again. Again, you can change the size of the, the ruffles a little bit by changing the stitch length. You just um, uh, experiment with your fabric and with your machine. Yeah. So Linda says, how do you decide whether you want to use the gathering foot versus the ruffler? That is the best question. Let's take a look at this and you'll see the difference. I'm going to open this up. And you'll be able to see the difference a little bit. All right. Um, it's kind of hard to see. So do you see how like exactly perfectly perfect spaced they are? Um, these little ruffles are about 3.5 millimeters long because that's the stitch length that I picked. And the, the flange was kicking the uh, fabric right in every stitch, right? So these are really very precise looking um, ruffles. And then when we use the gatherer, here's the gather. Harder to see on the dark fabric. I'll try to find that other piece. I kind of did it here. It's more organic. So you can, they almost look the same, right? To me, they look very similar. This was done first on the 16, and it's a little bit more organic, and this is very, very crisp. It gives a very crisp look. And if you do it every sixth stitch, you get something like on the pillowcase. Let me show you this pillowcase sample that I have. Do you see that? And do you see how um, tailored it looks? Because it's so evenly spaced that you wouldn't be able to accomplish with the simple gathering foot. You would need the ruffler to kick in every sixth stitch. Does that help a little bit with that question? Yeah. Hannah, Hannah says that the ruffler is more like a micro pleat. Yep. Yep. Very good. That's great. So you guys are playing with the rufflers and the gathering feet. That's really awesome. I'm glad. I know Hannah, you make a lot of clothes. I see that. Um, so you probably use the ruffler more than the rest of us. That's awesome. Hey, Gwen, how you doing? Linda, you liked that, right? That helped to, with your question. That's amazing. So yeah, that's the basics of um, gathering and pleating. And if you like um, other fashion uh, uh, techniques like ruching, ruching, you know, would is really when both sides of the fabric are kind of um, gathered up. So again, if you gathered on both sides and then sewed it into your garment, you'd have this kind of wrinkly um, look and that's that's ruching. Uh, there's more of these tips in the big book of feet and I'll send you out a copy of a link to the book called Gathering and Ruffling. It's an, a Bernina free ebook. It's really nice. You can load it on your computer, your iPad, or you can print it out. Um, yeah, and don't forget, you can definitely top stitch these ruffles to make them look even nicer using your number 10 C or D or 10 foot. And um, notice this little ruffle, I had pre-sewn um, the little hem here. I made a little rolled hem. Does anybody have a hemmer foot at home? That's how I did that. I, um, it's a really fast way to hem a long piece of fabric like a ruffle or a uh, drape or a shirt or something like that. That's really cool. And somebody was asking about how to use the hammer and I'll, I'll give you a little free lesson on that because we have two minutes left. I'll do that. So I'm going to take off this behemoth. Thank you so much, little ruffler foot. You are amazing. I tried to go the wrong way and it won't go. So this little hem, let me show you on this piece of fabric. So you can see the fabric is rolled over and then um, stitched down. You can do this by hand by taking it to the iron and 
folding over a quarter inch and then folding over another quarter inch and then sewing it shut. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use um, a hemming foot and we have about five hemming feet. Number 64 is a really good uh, basic one. We have number 61, number 62, number 63, 64, and 66. There we go. That's all of them. And how can you tell what size hem it's going to make? Well, you can see the little pigtails are bigger on some of these, so they're going to make a bigger hem. Um, but you can quickly check by just turning the foot over. Let's see if I can turn this one over. So you can see that's going to make a really teeny tiny hem. Only two millimeters on that little guy. And something like 63 will make a little bit of a wider hem. So 63 or 64 are nice ones to start with because they're not too terribly narrow. Here's 63 and 64. Oh, my fingers. And you see something else a little bit different about them? Um, this one's got a zigzag opening, so you could do a decorative stitch and you can move your needle over a lot more. And this one has a straight stitch, so you need to be right in the middle there. But actually, I like that one. It holds the fabric exactly perfect. Um, so that's the difference between 64 and 63. Let's go for 64. I'm doing this on the fly. Anything could happen. Let's see. Again, sewing from the side. Silly. So I'll show you how I like to do this. And then um, I'll meet you guys here next week. Every Thursday we do this. So um, what they want you to do is get the fabric right into that little pigtail there, right? There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can pre-iron this at the very end. I'm not ironing that whole strip, no way. But you could just iron the end and feed it through. But I'm going to show you another way to do it. You can make a little sewing handle. All right. So just go to the edge of the fabric right on the edge. The edge of my fabric's lined up with the foot, but I'm right on the edge of the fabric. Do a couple of stitches, not a lot, and then pull your fabric out. Leave some tails. There. See, I left some long tails here. Now I have a handle on my fabric, figuratively, literally, all of it. And then I can just feed it in the pigtail. A lot of the time I finger press it a little bit to get it started. Yeah. I'm going to just use this one. I wish I was sitting straight at the sewing machine. There we go. It hates me today. And my hand's right in the way, right, Sarah? Mm -hmm. Sorry. There we go. All right. It's right in that pigtail now. <laughs> Tweezers would be great. <laughs> oh gosh. Let me, my handle's kind of falling apart. Let's do it again. Easy peasy. Gonna roll even more. Whoop. It bunched up, guys. It's not my day. That's how it works. Not always your day. Should I try one more time? Or is there anything else anybody needs to see today? <laughs> Kathy says she should sew more more strings on things to get a handle. Yeah, sometimes it works, Kathy, and sometimes it don't. Sarah doesn't know my sewing room. If she did, she would be able to grab my tweezers for me and give me a hand. But, um, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's happening. It rolled. There it goes. So my friend Becky, she had a, 
What do you call that? Um, tree skirt. And it wasn't big enough. She needed it to be bigger in diameter and she wanted a border to be sewn all the way around. And it ended up that it was going to be a six foot wide uh, in diameter, in diameter tree skirt. So when you add that border on six feet all the way around to hem it, what's diameter, Sarah? Six times pi, yeah, pi D is, yeah. So what's perimeter? It's like three pi r, right? So it ended up being like 18 feet I needed to hem. And I was like, I love my friend Becky, but not that much. So I got this foot out, not my day, and rolled the whole thing. But anyway, trust me, 10 minutes ago, I did this little guy and it came out just great. So those are hemmers. We're gonna revisit hemmers again when we do um, some more fashion techniques and knits. We can use them on some knits, we have some. And yeah, I hope you'll give the rufflers a try. They sure were a lot of fun. I, I really have a lot of fun doing that. Um, and show me your ruffling projects. That would be amazing. So thanks everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I, if you have any more questions, just shoot them in the comments. We'll answer them. And I hope you found the sound was better today. We're really excited. And maybe next time we'll even have a better camera. You never know. So have a great week. We'll see you again here Thursdays, 3 p.m. Eastern. Ciao, everyone. Bye.